name is Kinship Chauhan and I'm a verbal faculty at College Depot. Uh, as a verbal faculty, I teach here GMAT, GRE, SAT, IELTS and TOEFL. Today, I would like to welcome you to our session on uh, uh, critical reasoning. This is our demo class of how we do the classes, what is our strategy of teaching and uh, we are going to start off by going through uh, the structure of the GMAT what it is and how it goes about and then we'll pick up a specific topic that is critical reasoning we'll practice we'll be practicing a few questions about it <clears throat> so first of all uh, the exam structure has four parts uh, analytical writing assessment integrated reasoning quantitative reasoning and verbal reasoning in analytical writing assessment you have to critically analyze a given scenario and you have to communicate your ideas in an effective manner it is a time bound test you get 30 minutes here and you have to write roughly around 300 words and you have to convey the task convey the idea required there so their grammar your uh, punctuation your vocabulary your uh, style of writing a sentence everything is tested there next is integrated reasoning now integrated reasoning have, have a in this section has a few question from the uh, verbal part few questions from the quants part Right. So in both the cases, you get some kind of data and some kind of evaluation you are supposed to make on that data and you have to answer those questions. They use different kind of skills. There are different, uh, uh, there's going to be a passage and then there is going to be some data about it and you have to correlate and then answer the question. In quantitative reasoning, your, it measures your ability to uh, solve the problems. Uh, it has a special type of question that is called uh, a data sufficiency question where uh, there is a question type given to you and uh, that question does not have all the information that it requires it may have it it may not have it so you have to and there are two options you can use either one of them or both of them or none of them so you have to understand that do you need that those two options uh, to answer the original question or not uh, that is what our data sufficiency question is the other type of question we see here is uh, your problem solving so basically it will be a word problem uh, it can be from uh, 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 geometry algebra trigonometry it can be from anywhere and you are supposed to find out the answer by solving in a conventional yet in a speedy manner and then we come to the verbal reasoning part so verbal reasoning basically tests you on your uh, understanding of the uh, English language to read and understand quickly and to uh, critically analyze it and uh, come to a conclusion. So here there are three types of questions. The, here uh, in the verbal reasoning here there are three types of question uh, reading comprehension, critical reasoning and sentence correction. In the sentence correction the sentences are based to test you on uh, your knowledge of uh, grammar and sentence structure in critical reasoning you have to critically evaluate a certain argument uh, and then you have to come to a logical conclusion as required by the question statement so further if you go down in critical reasoning again there are going to be different types of questions and uh, today we are going to cover one of such types uh, then uh, the reading comprehension is your conventional passage so these passages uh, are uh, in a generic nature it do not require you to be uh, a subject matter expert on a specific area so no specific reading per se you are required to do beforehand for these reading comprehension passages but what you are supposed to do is that you should have ability to comprehend and summarize the passage that is what, what is actually required there if you are able to do that uh, in an accurate way so you can answer the most of the questions there the entire test duration is three and a half hours so basically in analytical writing section you have 30 minutes one question you'll get an uh, analysis of an argument and you are scored in the range of zero to six integrated reason reasoning 30 questions 12 minutes right so what are the types of questions there graphical interpret graphics interpretation a table analysis, multi-source reasoning and two-part analysis. Again, point increment is 1 to 8. Here, uh, it is uh, good to note that... Alright, now let us understand what is the exam structure of the GMAT in detail. So, we have an analytical writing assessment test. 
right 30 questions one minute the type of question is you are supposed to analyze the argument right the score increases in a range of 0 to 6 from it goes from 0 to 6 and it increases in a 0.5 range that means you can get like you can get a 5 you can get a 5.5 you can get a 6 right between 5 to 6 there can be 5.5 only why because it is a 0 0.5 point increment then in integrated reasoning there are 30 questions and 12 minutes it is helpful to know that uh, the eight of the questions are from the quants part whereas four questions are from the verbal part so eight maths question and four uh, english based question there are so you can have a strategy using this technique as well because of course quants has more questions so if you focus more here you can get an easy score the types of question are you might be looking at a graph you might be looking looking at a table or multi-source reasoning or two-part analysis right and uh, here the score range is one to eight increases in one point only if we talk about uh, quantitative reasoning part you have 62 minutes and you have 31 questions and uh, th these are basically your data sufficiency and problem solving we discussed this already the lowest possible score you can get is six and highest possible score is 51 though they say that the score range is 0 to 61 but uh, they have a specific algorithm and uh, due to that algorithm no one scores uh, sorry 0 to 60 no one scores less than 6 and no one scores more than 51 right same is valid for the verbal part also now in the verbal part you have 65 minutes and 36 questions here you can see that uh, if you compare time and number of questions verbal part has more questions in about same amount of time right so here this gets a uh, this verbal part becomes challenge for a few students again we have discussed what type of question they have reading comprehension critical reasoning and sentence correction all right let's move on so basically what will happen is when you start the test you will be given option to choose in which order you want to do now this order is very important for your uh, strategy so basically you can start with analytical writing assessment then integrated reasoning then quantitative and verbal or you can start from verbal then quantitative then integrated reasoning and analytical assessment at the end or you can start with the quantitative part your maths part then verbal english then integrated reasoning and then analytical assessment you have to choose either of these three you cannot make your own choices now for example you can see you cannot start off with integrated reasoning you don't have that option Right, so either you do it uh, on the second go or the third go. That is the only option there, right? Uh, so you have to choose your strategy with keeping in mind what questions you are, uh, what specific type of question you are good at. If you are better at quantitative, then you can start with quantitative. Or if you think you need a fresh mind to do the verbal based question, then start off with the verbal based questions. skipping this slide all right so now let's talk about the gmat verbal part right so we have already discussed sentence correction so we saw that how many questions there are there are approximately 30, uh, there are 36 questions in the gmat verbal part now how are these divided the majority of these questions go into the pocket of uh, sentence correction that is you can say 13 to 15 questions you can get there and then in critical reasoning you can expect 10 to 11 questions and reading comprehension you can expect 10 to 11 questions again sentence correction has more weightage because it has more number of questions uh, the questions all the questions that you are going to see they have equal uh, uh, they are not uh, they are uh, okay i'm saying that again edit this part so all the questions that you are seeing on the uh, on the test on gmat they have different difficulty level depends on how you attempt the question so for example if your first question that you are attempting let's say this question number one this was going to be a moderate difficulty level right so they have an algorithm if you answer correctly right then your question number two will be of a higher difficulty level there will be more difficulty here as compared to question number one right if your answer is incorrect then you are going to end up with an easy question right now of course if i talk about the weightage difficult question carries more weightage over the easy question you will get more points for solving difficult questions correctly 
right of course you have to write uh, you have to solve every question you have to answer every question not leave any question unanswered all right now let's look at uh, what we are going to do today it's called critical reasoning so this is a critical reasoning question this is a critical reasoning question so you can see on the left top side here this is what we call a basic argument right now see every argument has basically two things one is its uh, background and the second thing is its conclusion the second thing is conclusion so basically these two things make uh, an argument right so what is our uh, what is our strategy here will when we are reading the argument we will find out what is the conclusion right and remember that our conclusion has to be the question specific so what what is question going for from there you will understand that what kind of conclusion we are looking for right so let us start off uh, by the question so now the question is the question is the argument above relies on which of the following assumptions so that means what one of these five answer choices is a likely assumption what does that mean uh, the argument given to us will be true based on one of these assumptions so whichever answer choice here makes our argument valid makes our uh, small this small passage given to us valid will be the right answer so let us understand that uh, how to find out the assumption so here it says there is a person ramirez what does it say what does this person say it says the film industry claims that pirated dvds which are usually cheaper than legitimate dvds and become available when before film's official dvd release date adversely affect its bottom line so what is happening here they're saying because of the piracy uh, you know legitimate dvds dvds before they can become av available the piracy takes over right and it it is affecting adversely then it says but industry should note what the spread of piracy indicates so according to the author piracy is indicating something what is that consumers want low prices and faster dvd releases right so author says ki okay the industry is saying that due to piracy they are being adversely affected but the author says now that uh, uh, industry should note that these are indications that people want lower prices and they want earlier dvd releases right further he says lowering prices of dvds and releasing them sooner would mitigate piracy's negative effect on the film industry profits right so this is his final point if you if you want to understand what is the author's conclusion here author's conclusion is there that lowering the prices of dvds and releasing them sooner would mitigate piracy's negative effect right and what is the background he has given us here the background is that piracy is adversely affecting and shows that people demand for lower prices and quicker releases of their uh, of the respective dvds right so we have to understand what makes this uh, connection valid that is going to be assumption so let us look at the first question first answer choice uh, answer choice a says releasing legitimate dvds earlier would not cause any reduction in the revenue the film industry receives from the film's theatrical release now some of you might think that uh, you know uh, this could uh, you know this could actually help the argument but the answer is you are not supposed to help the argument you are su not supposed to find out if something is plausible if something is possible but you are supposed to find out what connects this consumer wanting lower uh, lower prices and uh, quicker dvd releases how is author connecting that part to his final conclusion that if you do that then piracy would be mitigated so basically we have to establish that piracy is because of consumers demand of lower prices and faster dvd releases right on the other hand if we talk about answer choice a right it says that it is not going to you know cost them anything it will not cause any reduction in the revenue right we are not here looking for any reduction in the revenue that is not the connection that we are going for here right uh so of course they say that it will mitigate but the assumption behind connecting your final conclusion is missing now uh, next answer choice answer choice b 
some people who would otherwise purchase pirated dvds would be willing to purchase legitimate dvds if they were less expensive and released earlier than they are now now see this is exactly what author was going for that if you do that then piracy will be mitigated there will be mitigate it will mitigate the negative effect of the piracy so if people are willing to buy then definitely there will be less piracy so this could be a possible answer let's hold on to this one let us not eliminate it right now next the film industry will in future be able to produce dvds more cheaply than is currently the case so see here the main idea of this sentence is that they will be able to produce more cheaply in future right that has nothing to do with the current argument author is making so charlie answer choice c cannot be your right answer then next delta some current sellers of pirated dvds would likely discontinue their business if legitimate dvds were released faster and priced lower right so see this is telling us that the uh, the pirates uh, the uh, the pirates of these dvds they are going to discontinue their business if this happens the author is not saying that not saying that they are going to discontinue their business he is saying that people will avoid piracy because now it's available for a lower price and uh, it is get, they are getting it earlier than it was possible before so again this is not going to be the right answer last one current purchasers of pirated dvds are current purchasers of pirated dvds are aware that those dvds are not authorized by film industries so see this answer choice is neither here nor there okay so even if it is valid it has nothing to do with the author's argument right so again e again will not be valid they are talking about if they are they are all aware right so that doesn't matter because people are still doing piracy is still causing them negative effect so it has no point uh, no water to hold there so what will be the answer the right answer will be option b all right let's try another question so again the question is on the same basis right uh, we are supposed to find out the assumption the editorials argument requires right so what is the assumption behind the argument that is the question um pause the video right now try to get through the question yourself then when i discuss you can see if you got the right answer or not go ahead pause the video all right i hope that you had paused the video and you have uh, answered you have making a choice for your final answer let us discuss now so basically again as i told you there is going to be some kind of conclusion here so here uh, when we read the argument it says our city's public transportation agency is facing a budget shortfall the fastest growing part of the budget has been employee retirement benefits so right so what is there what are they telling that retired be- retirement benefits are increasing right retirement benefits are of they have been growing a lot so they are on the rise right that is what we know then it says unless the budget shortfall is resolved transport uh, unless the budget tran- uh, shortfall is resolved transportation service will be cut and many transportation employees will lose their jobs right so due to retirement benefits uh, increasing what is happening they have a decrease in amount of their budget and due to decrease in amount of their budget what is happening further that there will be job cuts right and so what does the author finally say author says that thus it would be in employees best interest for their union to accept cuts in retirement benefits so see finally what is all this leading to this is all the background so what is this all leading to they want to the, the author suggests that you should accept the cut for what for the general interest for the best interest of the union right so he says accepting will be in the best interest so now let us go through the answer choices and try to understand which answer choice is going to take us through this argument so answer choice a says transportation employees union should not accept cuts in retirement benefits if doing so would not be in the employees best interest so here uh, and the first uh, first go you might think that this could be possibly somehow connecting to some of it right so what it says is very agreeable 
but you are not looking for to accept on the basis of what will not be in the employee's best interest but we are looking in the direction of what will be in the employee's best interest so again though you could agree with this but this cannot be assumption behind this argument then next b uh, answer choice b says only feasible way for the agency to resolve the budget shortfall would involve cutting transportation service and eliminating jobs so now in this answer choice what are they saying that there is a solution right and what is that one solution that you have to resolve it and cut the transportation service and eliminate the job only then you can resolve the shortfall so it's not saying that you have to cut down on the retirement benefits so see it is talking all together in a different direction from what the author is saying right that they should accept the cuts in the retirement benefits so again this is not our assumption then next answer choice c it says other things being equal it is in the transportation employees interest to have exceptionally generous retirement benefits right so he says ki if he if, uh, it says that if uh, other things are all equal he's talking about the best interest but what, what was not there in answer choice b best interest was uh, sorry a in answer choice a did not they did not go for the best interest they go went for what is not in their best interest right but it says they should have except exceptionally generous retirement benefits right so this part is not required this part is not telling us because see they what they should have or they could have is different from what author is suggesting to them so author his conclusion is that uh, the best interest would be to accept the uh, cut in the retirement benefits so again answer choice c will not be the right answer then let's look at answer choice d cutting the retirement benefits would help resolve agency's budget shortfall right so this is what the idea was initially and author also supported it so this could be our answer let's look at answer choice e as well it says the transportation employees union will not accept cuts in retirement benefits if doing so will not allow more transportation employees to keep their jobs so see he is talking about that not accepting cuts if it does not help the employees to keep their job right so they are not talking about uh, the other condition here see again this is as good as answer choice a because answer choice a was saying that you should not accept it if it is not in the best interest right this is also saying the same thing they should not accept it if it is not in the best interest how is it saying that that not accept the retirement benefit cut in the retirement benefits if you are not able to keep the jobs the employees are not transportation employees are not able to keep their jobs that is as good as saying that they should not uh, accept the cuts if it is not in the employee's best interest so again e is not the assumption behind this argument so right answer choice is answer choice d you have to learn to write in a manner in a concise manner where you can understand what you are going for because you will not have time to write down detailed statements you will have to use some kind of a technique uh, you have to use some kind of Uh, uh, uh abbreviations or directions like i have used right and some kind of marks that will help you to establish what was the idea there right so that is somewhere you can you know stay focused by that otherwise you can find yourself you may find yourself reading through the same stuff again and again all right so again i would ask you to pause the video and try to solve this question then we'll discuss you'll be able to find out how you were able to were you able to understand in the right direction or not okay, go ahead pause the video all right so i hope that you have uh, uh, you guys have read the question and you have gone through the you have gone through all the answer choices and you have some kind of a solid answer right uh, if you are thinking that you still have doubt between two answer choices see uh, the test is also about being decisive so how will you become decisive you have to learn to eliminate right find something some basis to eliminate an answer choice because if you are not decisive at the end and you are uh, ending up getting confused between two answer choice then it will not help you right so there are certain elimination techniques there are certain uh, techniques that are commonly used in the gmat test to you know frame you for a wrong answer choice so uh, in the classes we discuss all the details 
uh, of these types and uh, we help we, we help you to you know identify these types of trap answers all right so let us understand what the argument was going for so the argument says uh, farmer says worldwide just three grain crops there are just three grain crops what are those wheat rice and corn uh account, they account for you know most human caloric intake okay then it says to maintain this level of caloric intake and also keep pace with the global population growth yields per acre from each of these crops will have to increase at least 1.5% every year given that supply of cultivated land is diminishing so what is the what is the challenge what is the first thing they tell us they tell us that the land is diminishing it is decreasing and we need to do what we need to increase the yield we need to increase the yield right so finally on this basis what does the author say author says that uh, government should increase the funding for research into new ways to improve the yields right so on these basis what they want they want to increase the funding of the research so the idea is pretty simple and direct uh, the land uh, the cultivated cultivable land is decreasing and uh, the yield has to increase because uh, there is a global population uh, to feed and uh, to increase the yield the government should increase the funding for this sole reason the government should increase the funding for the research in new ways to improve the yield now let us look at the answer choices and find out which of these answer choices could help see through this argument so if you look at answer choice a it says it is solely the government's responsibility to ensure that amount of rice wheat and corn produced worldwide keeps pace with the global population growth so in this it says it is solely the government's responsibility now see in the end author is asking that government should do the funding but is it government's responsibility that is is that what it is going for the answer to that is no that is not what it is going for you may think that it may mean the same thing but it is not the same thing it is indirect so anything that is indirect is less likely to be your answer so answer choice a is out of the picture now <coughs> <coughs> now let us look at answer choice b B says increasing government funding for research into new ways to improve the yields per acre of rice, wheat and corn crops would help to increase total worldwide annual production of food from these crops. Now it says increasing the funding will do what? Increasing the funding will help to increase. That is the idea behind it, right? Isn't that why the author is saying that government should increase the research so that they could improve the yields, right? So you should not eliminate this answer choice you should hold on to it next answer choice c it says increasing the yields per acre of rice wheat and corn is more important than increasing the yields per acre of other crops right so uh, okay uh, the author is not at all concerned about the yields of other crop right he is talking about that we have to find new ways to improve the yields right so he is not making any comparison here so no answer choice c will not be the right answer answer choice d says current levels of funding for research into ways of improving grain crop yields per acre have enabled grain crop yields per acre to increase by more than 1.5% per year worldwide so he is saying what is happening because of the current levels of funding you know they are uh, uh, because of the current level of funding uh, into the research for the new ways the yield has increased right they uh, have enabled grain crop yields to increase by more than 1.5% see this is the end of the research like you funded the research you uh, gave money to the research and then research uh, came out to be fruitful right so here in the in this argument author is not saying that uh, the research will come out fruitful the author is limited to the fact that they just should increase the funding right so again this is not going to be the right assumption last one it says in the com in coming decades rice wheat and corn will become a minor part of human caloric intake unless there is government funded research to increase their yields per acre so they are saying that they will be diminished they will not be consumed now that much if 
government is not funding right unless there is a government funded research so without the government funded research they will become the minor part of humans caloric intake the author is not about predicting the future what is going to happen in the future the author is making a prediction for the future ki uh, alright ki alright that uh, the government should increase the funding because we need to find new ways to improve the yield that is what he is projecting he is not telling us that what will happen you know years down the lane in the coming decades right so no answer choice e will not be the right answer answer choice b is the right answer let's look at another question again i would request you to pause the video try to solve this one on your own and then when i discuss you can assess that were you moving in the right direction or not go ahead pause the video and solve the question all right i hope that you pause the video and you have uh, solved the question now let us find out the assumption behind this argument so the argument says although the school would receive financial benefits if softering vending machines in the if they had softering vending machines in the cafeteria uh, but the author says that they should not allow them the uh, the uh, vending machines the softering vending machine should not be allowed for what reason allowing the softering machines there would not be in a student's interest if our students start drinking more soft drinks they will be less healthy right so see the final answer for that is no why is that no for a simple reason that more soft drink or soft drink i'm going to use a symbol of sd more soft drink means less health that is the idea that they are going for right now what is our task our task is to read the answer choices and find out which of the answer choices is going to make our argument work now if i look at answer choice a it says if soft drink vending machines were placed in the cafeteria students would consume more soft drinks as a result right so the author said that more soft drink is going to lead to uh, uh, less health that was his backing to he, that was his uh, support for saying that uh, the machine should not be allowed right and this gives us another thing that if they are placed students students are going to do what they are going to consume more soft drink because of this so more soft drink will lead to less health that point comes through right hold on to this answer choice never select any answer choice at the first go right hold on to this answer choice go through all the remaining answer choices and then if you don't find anything worthy you can go for the answer choice a if you find something worthy you can compare and eliminate now let let us look at answer choice b it says the amount of soft drinks that most students at the school currently drink is not detrimental to their health so we are not talking about currently drinking the author says that if we uh, install these vending machines students will drink more and if it, they drink more then it will be less healthy they are not concerned about what is the current status of uh, consuming soft drinks is it detrimental or not they are not concerned with that so no answer choice b will not be the right answer then answer choice c says students are apt to be healthier if they do not drink soft drinks at all than if they drink small amounts occasionally so see they are not uh, the argument's final thing is that you have more soft drink you get less healthy and thus for this uh, the final argument was that these vending machines should not be allowed right they are not telling us that Uh, if you do not take them, and you take them in small doses, what is going to be uh, healthier? What is not going to be healthier? So again, this answer choice here will be eliminated. The next one says students will not simply bring soft drinks from home if soft drink vending machines are not placed in the cafeteria, right? So see, students not carrying if there are vending machines. That is not what author is going for. The author's idea was not that students should not have to carry. Uh, extra weight the weight of uh, soft drinks with them to school the uh, author's idea was that if they have more access to soft drink if they drink more soft drink then they will be less healthy so again this will be eliminated then last one the school's primary concern should be to promote good health among its citizen 
okay their primary concern should be this part is completely right yes good promoting good health among its students should definitely be there but is that what the author is going for that is not what is backing author's argument author already has a uh, good interest of students and author already is trying to promote the good health but author is not commenting on what is the show, what should be the primary concern right so again answer choice e will be eliminated so which will be the right answer answer choice a becomes the right answer i hope you had fun solving these questions with me uh, for for the details please contact our counselors they will help you in whatever you are looking for thank you